this prayer is for the land and the language and keeping it strong. Tell Kukpi, you eat Kukchacham, the Kakchacham, the Sumak. You eat Skukstaku, the Skaktaku, the Sakwapam Kulu, Akwe, the stem, the stem, or eat. Akbuk, the Kustaku, Akaktaku, that's Sat Akhams. Al Kuwait, West Jewett, Steph Sakwapam, Al Walton Scoop. Traditionally, we were always a gathering people. We always came together. And we always had this love for each other. And we always supported one another. Every time I come here, it feels like I'm coming home. It's like my heart knows that I've been here before. It's like I'm being welcomed home by everything that we see around us. The blood of our people is 10,000 years of living on this land. It's a place that people don't think is Sokopmulu, but it is a part of our territory. And I think we're coming back here to honor our ancestors that uh, were from here. And the fact that we've never left this area, we were forcibly marched out of here in the 1900s. For us at Simp, this is where we come from. We were here prior to the parks. We were removed due to the park being made down to Vail Mountain and to where we are previously in Barrier. This is about boots on the ground, back on the land, enjoying the beautiful areas we all call home, our territories. I think a lot of our people really struggle with uh, a sense of belonging. And I think these these gatherings, especially this one right at the edge of the Sequim territory is, really helps ground people. You get to see other nations and you get to see that there's Sequim as well. And I think you'll see that uh, they're all as inviting as your own community. We're such a large nation that it's hard to connect with each other. But having these gatherings, we're able to make friends, reach out to other communities. And so you're, we're getting that sense of unity, family to family. Well, the language, the people, and the, the land are one, right? So what nation is um, recognized by the language they speak. In many different areas, our words are the same. And that just ties us to being Kalmuk. This is Kalmulkumk. It means this is, this is the Indian land. And the language ties us to that. When we breathe life and, and put our language back on the land, it grows. There's a pride of who I am and where I belong to that piece of Mother Earth. Our language is our survival. Everything of who we are as a Sakwapan people is embedded in the language. And it's embedded in our DNA and in our blood. And that's why elders that haven't spoken for a while, if they start speaking, if they start remembering because their body memory and everything that they have in them starts to remember. And the young people that have never heard it, it's still in their blood and they pick it up really quickly because it's part of who they are. I think it's important to learn our language because it's something we've kind of lost and we're like slowly gagging it back. And it was like, it's a part of us, but we don't realize it yet. At, at these gatherings, hearing the language being spoken and the stories around, it, it goes a long way because there's a pride there. 
that our youth they they see a value to it now because it's slowly going to disappear and it's up to the seventh generation to do something about that in a traditional cultural way and the seventh generation is starting to do that now you can see it when you come to these gatherings When we talk about our traditional laws, we learn from the land. It teaches us everything you know. It supplies us with our medicines. It supplies us with our food. Healthy land, healthy game, healthy people. We were put here to protect the land and the animals. And I think that that's what our traditional governance was all about, was protecting land and the animals. Look after the lands, because the lands will always look after you. You will never starve if you look after the lands. A lot of our laws are within our language, within our stories. And I think to me it's, it's key that we bring that back to govern ourselves. It was a different way of thinking way back. A family was pretty important. And one man alone? What happens if he gets sick or breaks a leg or anything happens to him where he can't go out and hunt? He's going to die. So everything was done in a community, collectively. That's how we govern the territory. And we did it through family groupings or consult and different family groups work together through the territory. And that's what we have to rebuild as our family units. It's a revolution of the mind almost. We have to go back to the way our elders used to treat each other. For where I'm from, we used to have a coffee and tea on the table or food as soon as you came in the house. And so that generosity has to come back. So I think we're getting there, but we've been colonized for so long that it's gonna take you know years to get back to where we wanna be. As a Sokwapan people, we have uh, so much strength. We have uh, people with so many different gifts. I think we have to really know and understand to honor the gifts that everybody brings to the nation. Whether they're you know, a young child or whether the oldest person in the community, everybody has a gift to offer. And once we start honoring those gifts, we'll see the nation rise up again. As a leader, as a Kukpi for my people, it's really important for me to have unity within our nation. We are all Sekwetmuk. We are all Kelmuk. This is our division of the Shushwap Nation. We're the caretakers of this area. We want to share with our own people. We want them to be part of this with us. So this to me, this is home. Not our reserves we're set at now. That's where we are now. This out here is where we come from. Oh, it's been prophesized as long as the water flows, the wind blows, the grass grows, you're in Sukhwap Mkhuluk. And how do we how do we explain that to 
the next generation.